All right, so after seeing the incredible success of my last video where I had a whiteboard, I had to bring it back. I have to increase my chances of success with YouTube. Now, jokes apart, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to actually make money with ads. This video is for you if you are an expert, a coach, consultant, you sell a course, you sell a service, or you are an agency owner. This video applies to you if you have a high ticket offer. So as long as you sell something for more than $1,500 or $2,000, then this video is for you. It doesn't really matter what niche you're in. It doesn't really matter what country you live in. It doesn't really matter how much budget you have. This video is for you. If this is the first time that you're running ads, you need to watch this video before you even press publish on your campaigns. If you're running ads and you're not happy with the results, then in this video, you're gonna understand why you are burning Money. Now, I don't really have a specific structure when it comes to this video. I'm probably going to free flow it, but there are a couple of topics that I definitely do want to talk about. In the beginning, we're going to be talking about how to actually calculate and set some KPIs for your campaigns. Everything starts by planning what is the goal and what are the KPIs that you should be hitting. Then we're going to be talking about the strategy that you should be running and some of the most common mistakes that people make. And then we're going to be talking about the actual campaign, the setup, and everything else. So let's actually get started with the first point, which is going to be the target. The first thing that you need to get clarity on, if you have a high ticket offer and you want to get high ticket clients through ads, is that you need to know more or less how much you're going to be paying for a call and what is a good cost per call. Now, since there are a lot of different metrics, you could have a different offer price, you could have a different closing rate, the easiest thing to do is you should just be taking the offer price. So let's assume that your offer price is $5,000 and then a good cost per call is anywhere between three to 5% of the offer price. So in this case, let's say for example, that we have a 5% cost per call. That means that we are paying roughly $250 for a call. Now that doesn't mean for a call that it actually shows up. So show up if you do everything well when it comes to ads, when comes to call traffic, you have a good sales process, you have a good follow-up process, you send people some materials that they can watch prior to the video, then you should be able to have roughly 70% short rate. Meaning that the cost per call in this case, as we said, is 250, okay? So for someone to book a call in your calendar, you're paying 250. If you have a 70% short rate, that means that you're gonna be paying, I believe it's 325, maybe a little bit higher but you will be paying $325 for, some, for someone to show up to the call. If your cost per call is 5% of the offer price. Now, closing rate, let's assume the standard 25%. Again, if you are an amazing closer or if you have an amazing closing team, then it can be higher. It can be 30%, 40%, 50%. If you have an amazing offer that is trending right now, then it can be higher. But I just want to play on the safe side. So, I'm going to say 25%, which means that your CPA, we just calculate 325 times four, is going to be $1,300, okay? Meaning that the return on investment is 3.8x, okay? So if you have a close rate of 25%, which is pretty average, short rate of 7%, which is pretty average, and a cost per call is 5% of the offer price, that means that your return is going to be 3.8x. If you, for example, have a lower cost per call that is around 3%, then automatically your return is going to be roughly 5x. Now, one thing I would say, which is very important, comes down to expectation. If you're spending $1,500 a month, $2,000 a month, $3,000 a month, in the beginning, you're always going to have a higher return, okay? It's completely normal. But at the same time, the volume of sales is going to be lower. So, for example, in that 3K, you might make an 8x return and you make 24K. As you scale up the budget, as you increase the ad spend, it's normal that your return is likely going to go down. Now, in order for you to have a great margin, to pay out the sellers, to pay out the closers, to pay out any type of expenses that you have, to pay your coaches, or your fulfillment team, if you have an agency, which for an agency, there are a couple of different things that we do need to take into consideration, so maybe I'll do a separate bit in the future, because with an agency, you have recurring revenue, so your lifetime value is going to be much higher in this case than 5K. So you can actually spend a lot more initially for that first transaction and have a low return because you know that the lifetime value is going to be higher. But that's maybe going to be a different video. If you actually do run an agency, then just drop me a comment and tell me, Marco, I need to see that video about agencies. 
and I'll drop it. But in this case, again, let's say that you go with a more aggressive approach, you start spending 10k a month, 20k a month, 50k a month. Ideally, your return, as I said before, should be between anywhere between 300 and 450%. That, that's like a realistic return. Now, once again, do we have clients that have a 10x return at scale? Yes, but a lot of times it's going to be for a couple months. It's for an offer that is trending, low competition, amazing sales team. The person that owns the offer is amazing from the camera, great organic presence. In general, if you have a good offer, if you have a good sales process, I would say that your goal, if you are scaling, should be between anywhere between 300 to 500%. Okay? And in general, when it comes to coaching especially, you should be collecting as much cash upfront. So even before that third, that 5K revenue, maybe you only collect, I don't know, 3K out of it. So initially, especially if you run ads, your goal should be to collect the highest percentage of the revenue on the, in the first transaction as possible. Okay? So this was the first thing that I wanted you to do. There are two metrics that you need to think about. Number one, it's going to be the cost per call. So ideally, most of the times, like you're going to be very profitable if your cost per call is going to be three to five percent of your offer price. Second metric that I want to talk about, and I will put it big. You probably already heard me talking about it in a previous video. It's something called the booking rate. So the booking rate, in simple words, is the number of calls divided by the number of leads. So let's say, for example, that you book ten calls and you generate hundred leads. That means that you are generating converting roughly 10% of the leads into calls, which is a good metric, okay? Now, when it comes to the booking rate, why is it important? Because if you are running any type of ads, there are different strategies that you can run. IGDM ads, IG follower ads, video sales letter, a webinar, a three-day challenge, an online workshop, school group. There are many different strategies. Now, one thing that I will say is that not all of those strategies, you're gonna see the, the same booking rate. There are some strategies that are also a lot more difficult to scale. You've probably seen some previous videos where I also said, if you think about some of the biggest players in the industry, do you see them running IGDM ads, IG follower ads? Probably not. If somebody's spending 50K a month on ads, they're not going to be running IGDM ads or IG follower ads. Maybe there is one person, maybe two people, but there are not going to be that many people. Most of the time at scale, you're looking for something that is predictable and something that is scalable. And the best strategy is, even if you are, even if you have a small budget, in my opinion, or a DSL, and a live webinar or an online workshop, once again, depending on the offer, depending on the audience that you're going after, but those for, I would say, the last two months, in my opinion, have crushed any other type of strategy. And with those strategy, most of the times, if you have a good DSL, if you have a great webinar, or if you crush it during your online workshop, you should be able to convert about 10% of the leads into calls. Okay? Of course, there are a couple more things that we need to say. If you have someone to call the leads or to reach out to them right after the opt-in, that number is likely going to be a little bit higher. If you don't do any type of outbound, that number is going to be likely a little bit lower. So the range probably could be 7 to 14%. Again, we want to look at averages. So averages will probably be about 10%. So the two metrics that you're looking at here are one, the target cost per call, number two, the booking rate. Second thing I would say is I'm going to be assuming this video because otherwise it, it will literally be too long. I'm going to be assuming that you run a video sales letter strategy, which is one of the most common ones. It's predictable, scalable, profitable, and it's overall amazing. So give me one second. I'm going to delete everything that I have here. So the first step, if you want to crush it and actually make money with that, is going to be to validate the message. So in this case, what you want to do is really simple. Initially, you want to put your focus and your energy and your attention on the actual ads and the messaging. So I'm going to give you a couple of different examples so you know what I mean. What do I mean by body the message? Let's say, for example, that you run an Airbnb offer, okay? You teach people how to do Airbnb arbitrage and that's basically what you do. When it comes to Airbnb, if you think about even the clients that you work with, if you think about the people that bought your offer, a lot of people will want to join something like that for different reasons. So the first one, for example, you could frame it, and that's like the big idea. I call it the big idea or the, the message that you use to attract a specific type of person. So let's say in the beginning, you don't know what is the main goal that people have, what is the main problem that resonates with them. So that's where you test the message. So for example, one way you could be framing Airbnb, the opportunity, as an opportunity to basically 
make a second salary. You can frame it as a side hustle. Or you could frame it as the best way to make an additional 5k a month if you want to spend more time with your family. Another message that you could use to present this opportunity could be the low competition. Compared to the traditional online businesses like dropshipping, Amazon VA, or publishing SMMA, Airbnb is one of the best business models when it comes to low competition. And because there is low competition, you have high, higher chance of succeeding. That could be another way of framing your message. Another one could be the future projection. So let's say that you have some data, you have some research, and you see that the Airbnb industry in five years is going to be worth XYZ. That is another way of framing the opportunity as something that is still very early on and that and where you have great chances of actually succeeding. Another one could be freedom. So again, maybe someone doesn't care about a business that can allow them to have more time with their family. Maybe they want to travel more. Maybe they want to have a business that can allow them to work from anywhere in the world as long as they have a computer and internet connection. So you can see that these are all different messages. You can see that they are very different, okay? So what you want to do in this case is initially, phase one, stage one, you want to value the message. So you want to start spending money. Let's say that you have your one campaign, you have your ad set, and you start running these five ads. What you're looking for here is where is the demand? Where are, what are people resonating with? So for example, let's say that you, okay, you see that there is a lot of demand for, for these and go for the side hustle, then you know that, okay, this is the winning message that we need to use. And then we need to start doing all the different variations of the test. Now, one more thing I would say is when it comes to the step one, again, if we are sending people to the opt-in page, at this stage, I wouldn't do anything overcomplicated. So when it comes to the opt-in page, you keep it simple. If you want, if you have the time, you can even have five different opt-in pages. So basically each ad is sending people to an opt-in page. So in this case, for example, if you frame it as a side hustle, on the opt-in page, the messaging will be uh, congruent with the side hustle. If you want to test the family message, then the opt-in will be congruent with the uh, family message. But again, you don't, you don't want to overcomplicate this that much because what you're looking for here at stage number one is where is the demand? Where is the money? What people want right now? Because it's always the market that tells you what you want. So again, stage number one, you want to validate the message, okay? And when it comes to validating the message, one big mistake that I see people make is that they don't really think about their audience. They don't really think about what are all the different ways of presenting the unique opportunity that you have. Because even, okay, in this case, I gave you the Airbnb uh, example, but the same applies if you run an agency, if you run a service, if you even, I don't know, in my case, if I do pay ads for coaches, there are so many different ways of framing the opportunity because at the end of the day, this is an opportunity. You are telling the person that is seeing the ad, that is watching the ad, hey, I can help you solve the problem that you have and I can help you get to the desired situation. So when it comes to that, as I said before, there are so many different ways of doing it. But one mistake that I see a lot of people make is that initially, they try to overcomplicate everything. Do I need to use interest, lookalikes? Do I need to have uh, ABO, CBO? Guys, it doesn't work like that. Initially, you want to keep it as simple as possible. But to validate the, mes the message, potentially what you could even do, one campaign, one ad set, the targeting doesn't really matter, you can keep it broad, and then you have, in that one ad set, five ads with the five big messages, with the five different messages, and you see which one resonates. You start spending after three days, okay, I can see that people are really engaged with the side hustle, I have a much higher CTR, I get a lot of people messaging me about the side hustle and how they can get started. So I know that, that is a winning angle. But again, you want to keep it simple because in the beginning, the biggest mistake is you are trying to overcomplicate things so much. And if you overcomplicate things and if you're trying to do all these separate things, if you lose track of the data, you don't actually know what works, what doesn't work, what resonates, what doesn't resonate. And what ends up happening is that you spend budget and then, so for example, in this case, okay, let's say that you spend dollar a thousand dollars and you make back a thousand dollars you're like oh my god like the campaign is not working i'm breaking even i'm gonna give up well what's probably happening is that if you start running ads and you spend a thousand and you make back one thousand probably one of these angles is having a much higher return than one one to one maybe the side hustle has a one to five overall yes you do have a one to one return but it's very unlikely that all these ads have the same return, okay? So very, very important that you first start off by validating the message. So the opt-in and everything else 
you want to take a look at it, but it doesn't really matter that much because even in that case, it's going to be dynamic. It's always going to change. So the first thing that you'll do is you're going to buy the message. You're going to start spending money and you're going to see where is the demand. What are people resonating with? What are people liking? So step number two is actually going to be to make sure that you are maximizing as much as possible what happens after people click on the ad. So the next step, if you think about the funnel, in this case, again, I gave you the example of the VSL funnel, but the same principle applies to all the other strategies I mentioned before. But with the VSL funnel, you have the ad, you send people to the opt-in page, people watch the VSL, and then they book a call, okay? So the next step in this case, we are sending people to the opt-in page. So for example, let's say that you have your winning ad, and then you're sending people to the opt-in page, and your opt-in page converts at 10%, which is under KPIs for the opt-in rate I would say 20 to 30 percent is probably what you should be shooting for. If you're sending the traffic, even if you found the winning angle, this is still burning a lot of money because you're potentially losing two to three times the amount of leads that you could potentially be generating. So in this case, before we start testing different variations that I'm going to explain later on what do I mean by different variations of the side hustle, you first want to fix the opt-in page. So in this case, you don't really change anything with the ads, you start making different changes to the opt-in page. And if you don't know what you should be doing with the opt-in page, you just go check one of my previous videos where I talk about the opt-in page and where I show you the seven different tests that I did on one of my funnels that got my opt-in page from 7% to 47% in just seven days, okay? So you wanna pause for a second whatever you are testing here with the ads and you wanna fix the opt-in rate, okay? So the opt-in rate, let's say that you make some changes, you get to 25%, perfect. Now, the same, Principle also applies to the next step because if you think about the steps we have, as I said before, we have the app, then we have the opt-in, then we have the VSL, and then we have the call. So let's say this one is fixed. The ad is moving KPI, you can see where there is demand that says that the opt-in rate is fixed, then the same thing will also go for the VSL. So let's say that your VSL converts at less than 10%. Before you start testing all the different ads, you also want to fix that. So if your VSL is already 3%, okay, you need to change it because if, let's say for example, that you see that all the KPIs, all of the metrics from the ads are within KPIs, the opt-in rate is converting, but your VSL is not converting, right? We, you need to change that before you go back to the ads and you focus on killing the ads and start doing all the new tests. So let's assume that by now, your funnel is actually converting. So your opt-in rate is within KPIs, your VSL is within KPIs, what do you do next? Well, at that stage, that's where you actually start testing different ads, and I will show you exactly what is the step that you should be following. And that's gonna be step number three. So step number three, so by now, again, remember, our opt-in page is converting in KPIs, and our funnel is converting in KPIs. And we tested the five messages initially, and we found one, which is the side hustle, okay? So whenever it comes to the ad, you always have to take into consideration the three components of an ad. You have the hook, you have the body, and you have the call to action. So if you found the winning messaging, the next thing that you need to do is very simple. Again, take the winning ad, and then here you create five new hooks. Body remains the same, CTA remains the same, okay? So in this case, you you don't even need to record a body and a call to action. You can literally take the same body and same call to action, but you just want to have five different hooks. Now the goal is to, again, once again, find within that message, which is the side hustle, which hook is getting the best result. Now, when it comes to hooks, if you're interested about it, then I can always create a future video because I don't even know, it's been probably like 20, 25 minutes and we're recording this video, so I don't want to make it too long. So if you want to get a video or if you want to see a video where I talk about uh, hooks, then just let me know and I'm more happy to create a video in the future. But at this stage, we test five different hooks, body call to action. So what happens at that stage? Same exact thing that we did before, remember? We test the five different ads, we see what works, we see what doesn't work, and then we just cut out everything that doesn't work, and we focus on what actually brings the results. Same thing here. Let's say that we have five different hooks. Hook number five doesn't work, hook number three doesn't work, hook number three, oh, hook number one doesn't work. So we have two hooks, okay? So what do we do in that case? Next step is going to be to take those two hooks and create some additional variations. And when you get to the point where testing new hooks doesn't really make that much difference and you kind of got to the point where the performance cannot be optimized that well, then the next step is you're going to be taking the winning hooks and you're going to go to stage two, which is going to be testing different bodies. So you take the winning hooks and now you test them with different bodies. Call to action remain the same. When you find the winning bodies, what do you do? That's different call to action at the end. Now, one thing that I also do want to talk about, which is very important, is also the importance of the different variables and how much they actually impact results. Because a lot of times people 
tell me they are at this stage, okay? Side hustle, they, they found the winning messaging. And I tell them, okay, you need to test five different hooks. And they say, can I test five different ad copies? And my response is always saying, no, because the five hooks have a much higher chances of getting you better results than testing five new copies. There is a level of importance. It's much more likely that you're going to be optimizing and improving your results by testing different hooks than testing a different ad copy. So the creative is, in my opinion, responsible for 80% of the results. So 80% of the results come from the creative. The remaining 20% come from the ad copy and the headline. So again, you want to focus on that 80%. Let's say that you get to the point, once again, that you have found the winning hook, the winning body, the winning call to action. At that point, yes, I give you the green line and you can start testing different ad copies and different headlines. What happens afterwards, which by the way, like by the time you go to this stage, you're probably pretty mine, okay? But let's say that you get to the stage where you've done everything correctly, you tested all the ads, you tested all the hooks, all the body, all the call to action, you maximize your performance. What is the next stage? Well, the next stage is you go back to step number one, my friend, testing a different messaging. So in this case, let's say that we know that the side hustle got us good results, and that is one mark, okay? Then the next logical thing to do, and what is the best thing, if you maximize all the tests from the winning messaging, is going to be to test a different messaging so you attack the market from a different angle and you go after like a different segment of the market. So let's say that you go, you have a million potential people that could be interested in your offer. Okay, the side hustle, that is like 200,000. That one, like we got them all. The next step is going to be to go after the next 200,000 people. So the next 200,000 people, okay, what is it that they resonate with? Still would be the Airbnb offer, but what do they resonate with? Maybe they don't resonate with the side hustle, maybe they resonate with the family. Okay, perfect. We go back to the family and we go back to the same process. So we find the winning app, we test the new hooks, once we test the, and find the winning hooks, then we test the body, then we test the call to action, then we test the ad copy, and then we test the headline. So with that being said, I know that this video is quite long, it's probably 40 minutes, and I did talk about a lot of things. Now, I already took some notes, I do need to create a video about the hooks, and I do need to create a video for agency owners and how to actually calculate and know how much money you should be spending to acquire one customer considering that the lifetime value is going to be a lot higher and you can potentially spend more in the beginning, in the initial stage. On top of that, is there anything else that I wanted to tell you? I don't think so. Yeah, basically these are three steps that you want to follow if you actually want to make money and scale your business with paid ads, okay? As I said before, three steps. The general denominator is always the same. You want to be able to optimize for simplicity and you want to be able to track all the data and you want to avoid complexities like the plug. If there is one thing that really kills beginners when it comes to paid ads is complexity. If you overcomplicate things, you are going to be burning money. Okay? So keep it simple and focus on A, the messaging. B, making sure that you do whatever traffic you're sending to the funnel, you're actually not burning that traffic. So make sure that your opt-in page is as optimized as possible, that your VSL is as optimized as possible. And if you don't run an opt-in page or in VSL, make sure that your process between when you generate the traffic and when you book a call is as optimized as possible. Once you do that, perfect. If everything is moving KPIs, you go back to your winning messaging and you start with the next round of testing and new variations. Hooks, voice, Corrections, head copies, and headlines. Once you do that, then you tackle the next segment of the market and you dominate it. So, that being said, I hope that the video was helpful and I will see you next time. Now, I need to jump on a call. I know I put my watch a couple times, but I need to jump on a call. So, if you have any questions, by the way, as always, send me a message on Instagram. You can find me at Bonazza Marco underscore and I always reply to all my messages. And that being said, see you next time. I hope that the whiteboard is going to get me 1.3 thousand views like last time, so let's make it happen.